friends! Welcome back to another Sunday Mass. I hope you have had a great week. Did you have someone new in school? Or some visitors at school before? I have. We had a new girl from India that joined our class last term. And we made her a card to feel welcomed and loved. The last few weeks, we have been learning how every one of us is made in the image and likeness of God. We are called to love and care for each other, just like how God loves us, even if it is difficult at times. We are not only called to care for God's people, we are also called to care for all of His creation, this world and home that He has given us. God has made us stewards of the world and all the living things that He has created. Join us today to learn more about being good stewards. Let us first begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, giver of life and source of freedom, thank you for your wonderful creation. Help us to care for and be good stewards of your creation and of all that you have entrusted us with. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Dad, what does it mean to be a good steward? Oh, well, being a good steward means we are responsible to take good care of all that God has blessed us with, like our time, our talents, our things, our home, and also our entire world. Huh? Our entire world? Yes, our entire world. God has given the world to us, for us to live in and care for. Now remember the story in Genesis? God made the sky, the land, the sea, and all the plants and creatures, and it was beautiful. Then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and care for it. God gave us this world to live and enjoy in. We have majestic mountains, amazing beaches, beautiful sunsets, and animals and insects. He has also given us the responsibility to care for and protect all of His creation. Bless the Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship. It's time to 
sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the Joy, I've just brushed Fluffy. Can you walk him? Can you ask Mom to do it today? Joy, Mom walked him yesterday and the day before and the day before. And she's busy right now. Maybe you could help? But, but I'm at a really exciting part of the book. I just can't put it down now. Please call. What about you? Can you walk him today? Please? I'm not trying to stop you from reading, Joy, but... You need to be responsible when you have a pet. It's like, you know how mom tells us that the two of us are gifts from God? Mm, yes, that always makes me feel precious. Exactly, and that's why mom and dad take care of us and always do what's best for us. Yeah, even when mom and dad are tired, they always make sure we're taken care of. Right, and just like how we are gifts to them, Fluffy is one of God's gifts to us. So, we should take care of him and treasure him, even if we're tired or reading a really interesting book. <sighs> You're right, girl. I'll go up Fluffy now. Awesome! Come on, baby. We are called to be good stewards of the gifts that God has given us. Being a good steward is to be responsible. We try our best to do what is needed to take care of the gift that is given to us. We do it even when sometimes we do not feel like it or would rather do something else. Gifts are given to us to enjoy, just like how Fluffy is a fun playmate and pet for Joy and Jerry. The better we take care of our gifts, the more we are able to enjoy them. When we do that, we are telling God that we love Him and that His gifts are precious to us. Enjoy hey House the Walk. It was really nice. I think Fluffy misses taking walks with me. 
Or maybe he's just bored of mom by now. <laughs> Actually, you know what you said about Fluffy being God's gift to us? As I was walking just now and heard some birds singing in the trees and some squirrels running up and down the branches, I realized God didn't just give us Fluffy. Every animal in the world is a beautiful gift from God. That's true. And did you know that when God created Adam, he let Adam name every animal? What? So Adam was like, Dog, cat, turtle! Yes, I'm sure that's exactly what he did. So, in a way, just like we name our pets now, God entrusted all these animals to Adam. So, just like we take care of Fluffy, we should take care of all animals. Yeah, maybe not taking every dog for a walk, but we should be kind to animals, whether they are our pets or not. We should take care of their homes, and make sure we're not harming them or the place they live in. Genesis 2, 19-20 says, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. Just like how our mummies and daddies gave us our names when we were born, and just like how we name our pets or our favourite stuffed toy, God gave all His animals and creatures to us to name, to love and to care for. So this week, think of how you, your family and your community can take care of all creation and be good stewards of the beautiful creation that God has given us to enjoy. The splendor of the King Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great! Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had free in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great!
On the 4th of October, we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi is the patron saint of animals and the environment. St. Francis's deep love for God overflowed into love for all of God's creation. He saw animals as his brothers and sisters because they are God's creatures. St. Francis invited all of creation, animals, plants, natural forces, even Brother Sun and Sister Moon, to give honour and praise to the Lord. He teaches us, if you have men who will exclude any of God's creatures from the shelter of compassion and pity, you will have men who will deal likewise with their fellow men. God requires that we assist the animals when they need our help. Each being, human or creature, has the same right of protection. Let us follow the example of St. Francis by embracing all creatures, by respecting and caring for each and every one of God's creation. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. It is now time to set up the altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about something that we see in a Catholic school. There's someone in a Catholic school who makes it different from other schools. Is it your best friend? Your teacher? Or your principal? No! Every Catholic school has a chapel with a tabernacle. And do you remember who is in the tabernacle? That's right, Jesus is inside in the form of bread. But how do we know when he's there? The red sanctuary lamp will be lit. It means, hello, I'm here for you. You can drop in at your school chapel before class or during recess to spend time with Jesus. You might want to thank him when you are happy, to tell him when you feel sad, or ask for help when exams are near. No matter whether the chapel is big or small, or simple or grand, it is the living, beating heart of your Catholic school. So why not visit Jesus there soon? Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the school chapel. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about caring for God's creation. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 3rd October 2021. We offer up this Mass for all families, that the love of Christ may reign in their homes and hearts. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And your children, parents and grandparents, all of you at home, um, this weekend we celebrate with hearts joyful. Even though some of us are very anxious or worried, especially with the COVID situation around us, uh, some of us are having exams, and so some of us are a little bit more um, easy to get angry and upset. And for those times that we have maybe failed to be a bit more kind and more generous and a bit more tolerant, we ask the Lord to give us His patient mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So from the soil, the Lord God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds of heaven. These he brought to the man to see what he would call them. Each one was to bear the name the man would give it. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of heaven, and all the wild beasts, but no helpmate suitable for man was found for him. So the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and enclosed it in flesh. The Lord God built the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man exclaimed, This at last is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman. For this was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. because he submitted to death. By God's grace, he had to experience death for all mankind, as it was his purpose to bring a great many of his sons into glory. It was appropriate that God, for whom everything exists, and to whom everything exists, should make perfect through suffering the leader who would take them to their salvation. For the one who sanctifies and the ones who are sanctified are of the same stock. That is why he openly calls them brothers. The Word of the Lord
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it against the law for a man to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He answered them, What did Moses command you? Moses allowed us, they said, to draw up a writ of dismissal, and so to divorce. Then Jesus said to them, It was because you were so unteachable that he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. That is why a man must leave father and mother, and the two become one body. They are no longer two, therefore, but one body. So then, what God has united, man must not divide. Back in the house, the disciples questioned him again about this, and he said to them, The man who divorces his wife and marries another is guilty of adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she is guilty of adultery too. People were bringing little children to him, for him to touch them. The disciples turned them away. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. I tell you solemnly, anyone who does not welcome the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Then he put his arms round them, laid his hands on them, and gave them his blessing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. So we have a very good friend today. And so, children, do you know what day is the 4th of October? Do you know whose feast day is it? What are we celebrating on 4th of October? Any idea? No guesses. Hmm, you look a little bit puzzled. Scratch your head. It is my feast day. You have forgotten. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Francis. It's like your birthday into heaven. So October 4th is Francis's feast day. Say hello, everyone. Hello. Good. So, Francis, so you are going to have your feast day on the 4th of October on Monday. Let's see, in your life, what is that special moment that you always remember? When you think of Francis, what special moment do you think happened in Francis's life? Any guesses? Take care of animals. Take care of animals, very good. And later, we are going to have the blessing of animals because Francis was always seeing uh, creation animals as his brothers and sisters, right? So we've got brother dog, sister cat, brother sun, sister moon. Is that right? Yes. They're all my brothers and sisters like you. Okay. Stop being so affectionate. Okay. So what other things do you remember from Francis's life? Hmm. Is Eva trying to say something but I cannot hear? Okay, I will ask you later, okay? So, Francis, tell us, what event do you remember particularly? Hmm. 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 Oh, Francis is thinking. Give him some time to think, okay? I think it's my time with the leper. The, your time with the leper? Children, you know what or who lepers are? Yeah? Lepers have got this 
horrible disease, poor thing, that's called leprosy, and it's quite contagious, almost like our COVID today. A COVID's like a cold or a flu. But leprosy affects the skin, it causes the fingers and the toes to drop out and you become disfigured. It's actually quite scary. Yeah, it's very scary. I was very frightened. Okay, okay, okay stop trembling, stop trembling. All right. So, um, you can see that he's still having a lot of trauma. Um, but what happened with this leper? Well, when I started falling in love with God, one day in my conversion, I was on my horse, I saw the leper, and instead of running away, usually as I do, I came down from the horse and I went to him, I hugged him and I kissed him. You kissed the leper? Oh my gosh, you could have caught leprosy yourself. Yeah, it was so strange. God's power in me was so great that I had to go hug him and show him my love, God's love for him. Wow, children, did you hear that? God's love is so powerful that Francis had to get off the horse and go and hug the leper. So what happened? So what happened for you? Well, what was bitter before was sweet. What was bitter is now sweet. You mean like if you eat bitter God, it will become sweet for you? Not that. Okay, okay, not that. Um, it's about, I see your soul, when you saw lepers, you were very frightened and afraid. And so it was bitter, right? And so now, you're beginning to see the leper as a brother. You hugged him and you're not afraid anymore. And then somehow it turned to sweetness of your soul. That's right. It's amazing. If you allow God to work within you, it is amazing. Okay, I believe you. I believe you. Right. You know what word I have for you? What? I think I'm going to give you this word. Hmm, children, you know what word I'm going to give Francis as a present for his feast day? I'm going to give him this special term called endemic love. Endemic love? Isn't that for viruses? Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, children, you've heard of the word endemic, right? Have you heard of the word endemic? Parents explain the word endemic. You know what endemic means? Okay, you know, in our nation, we're saying that we're going to let the virus, the COVID virus become endemic. It means we're going to start living with the virus, which means that we're going to be comfortable with it and no longer to be so fearful. And we're just going to continue to live life. Yes, and to live life and love. Right. So the word endemic is very interesting. N means in. Demic means people. So that means it's into the people. So that instead of the virus that's going among the people, in the people, Francis, your kind of love is endemic also. That your love can be also among the people. That now instead of people living with fear, like with leprosy during your time, and during our time is the COVID virus, now your love is going to be endemic. Oh, that's true. Children, do you like that? Endemic love. So what we're called to do is not to be afraid, but to love and not to fear. Let's look at our gospel, right? Mm -hmm. What do you see in the gospel? Well, it's a lot of things about divorce and all the strange things. Yeah, it's talking about fear, like, oh dear, if the marriage doesn't work out, then how do I divorce? Do we think about divorce when we start to get married? No, right? What do we think about when we get married? Hmm, love, of course. That's right. So some of us are so fearful that before we begin starting a, a life of like marriage or on an adventure or doing a wonderful project for God, we start to think of the horrible things that might happen and the disaster, and we become very fearful. That's right, very fearful. Okay, good. You're, you're very attentive today. Um, and so we become very fearful. And so sometimes we think of all the horrible possibilities, but we forget why we do the things in the first place, like marriage. Marriage is about love. Secret, secret, yes. Oh yeah, so the secret to marriage is love. And so Jesus is telling us to go back to the beginning of creation to remember why we get married. It is for love. And may I suggest endemic love. So don't let the fear cripple us, the what if horrible things happen. We think about the possibilities. What can unite us? And so, children, what are you thinking about these days? What causes you a bit of anxiety and fear? What causes you to sometimes hide away and to think about the horrible possibilities, right? Sometimes we're very frightened and we get anxious. Yeah, 
we should try to focus on God's love, God's power. Woo! Yes, and remember, God always gives us that possibility of his friendship. So never fear, my dear friends. And so with Francis telling us this, we can be assured that God's love is always with us, no matter what challenge comes along. Yes, don't be afraid. Just trust God like a little child. Trust his love and know that his love is always with us. Do you believe that? I believe you because Monday is your feast day. And so as we celebrate your feast day, which is about love, about the kingdom of God that is love, let us welcome the kingdom of God, this kingdom of love that God wants to reign upon us and to bless us with. And after this Mass, we're going to have the blessing of animals and we're going to also give you a special blessing of St. Francis, right? Yes! So see you later, enjoy the Mass and remember that at the Mass, Jesus is truly present for us so that whatever we are fearful of, whatever we feel is very difficult, we allow Jesus to touch our lives, come into our lives and to walk with us. Walk with us and to give us hope. See ya! And now, dear friends, let us not profess what we believe in with all our heart. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, all priests and clergy. We pray that our Heavenly Father may give them the wisdom, insight and fervor in leading the Church to be channels of love, peace and healing in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they may be inspired to encourage work that fosters peace and justice for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may give generously of our time and talents to spread your kingdom in our families, communities, parish, and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that we can be united to care for and protect the environment and be good stewards of our planet and its resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from COVID-19, that our Lord brings healing and comfort to them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let the love of Christ be established in our marriages, homes, and families. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pleasure of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clare, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and from the divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
And Jesus would like us to have unity and peace in our families, so let us now turn around and wish each other the sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him. So my dear friends, during this time of spiritual communion, let us continue to look to the Lord who is good. And even though the situation around us sometimes affects us and causing us distress and causing us anxiety, let us continue to let that love of God which pierces through the darkness and difficulties and to give us that peace, that hope in our faith that God's love will prevail, that endemic love. And let us not be afraid to bring that love to everyone, especially we feel those that are in distress who are alone and those who feel that they don't deserve to be loved. So let us bring that peace and that goodness and that love to them as well. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, following this Mass, we are going to have the blessing of animals. So if you have your animals, you can get them ready. And uh, for those of you who would like to join the Franciscan Friars, uh, at 5 p.m. today, the 3rd of October, we're going to have a live stream, a blessing of animals on our Franciscan Friars YouTube channel. Um, so you can also join us for that blessing of animals at that point, because we're celebrating the Feast of St. Francis on the 4th of October. And so now I'll give you uh, the blessing, especially the blessing of St. Francis, and to wish your families good health, peace, and joy, and unity always with the love of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Do you know what song this is? This is the Canticle of the Sun. And it is originally composed by St. Francis, whose feast day we're celebrating on the 4th of October. And that is a song as well. And this is a song that's composed by Francis to praise God through Brother Sun, Sister Moon, Brother Fire, Sister Air and Water, Mother, Sister Earth. And so, today we gather together for this blessing of animals. So, do you have your animals ready? Wonderful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So, hold up your animals, and you've got holy water. Prepare your holy water as well, as I give this blessing. And here we have got Amber, held by Sylvester. And we also got... The very noisy Rocky held by Timothy. Right. Ready for the blessing? Okay. Blessed are you, Lord God, maker of all living creatures. On the fifth and sixth days of creation, you called forth fish in the sea, birds in the air, and animals on the land. You inspired St. Francis to call all animals his brothers and sisters. We ask you to bless these animals, these pets of ours. By the power of your love, Enable them to live according to your plan. May we always praise you for all your beauty in creation. Blessed are you, Lord our God, in all your creatures. Amen. And if any of your pets are sick, we now have a special blessing for sick animals. Heavenly Father, you created all things for your glory and made us stewards of this creature, our pets, who is sick. If it is your will, restore it to health and strength. Blessed are you, Lord God, and holy is your name forever and ever. Amen. And if you have got your holy water, you can use your holy water on your pets right now. The Lord be with you. 
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and always bring joy to everyone, especially to all creation and your pets. God bless you. Bye-bye. Sisters and brothers in Christ, remember Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I invite you to take the word bread and let it give you life. So be, begin the day with your beloved. As you wake up, after you've done your routine, maybe just before breakfast or maybe just after breakfast, sit down, say a short prayer. And then we have are routinely read the Word of God. Pick up the Bible, read for five minutes. Sometimes we say, I read the Bible, I'm very difficult. Okay, start with the simple ones. What are the simple ones? The Gospels, the stories about Jesus. I'm sure as you read the stories of Jesus, the things that He had done and the things that He had said are not so difficult. What's the next word? E. Every day, even as you pray, affirm someone. Start with the ones that are closest to you. Now tell me something. Are you really saying there's nothing good in the one that you call beloved? And you know, after three days, you think to yourself, I can't think of anything else, you know. <sighs> nothing else to think about. Never mind. Repeat the same things. At least they know. You know that your spouse knows that you always think that she is thoughtful. A is attend to the Eucharist. Attentively. You know, sometimes on Sunday, because it is recorded, you say, I will watch it later. Sisters and brothers, you're not going to get anything if you watch. Because the Eucharist, while it's there, it's empty of you. You are not there. Try and make it the first thing in the morning. And then while you're watching, you know, don't press the pause button and then on your computer, yeah, I forgot to do this homework. Or I forgot to do this, send this email. No. Attentively participate. And D, donate generously. Now, why do you need to donate generously? Because donation is moving that prayer into action. So we donate to the needs of the church. And when we begin to do this, what happens is your heart begins to grow. When your heart begins to grow, even though we are in this difficult situation, where you can't attend the Eucharist physically, daily, as we would like to, as our heart grows, we will be able to face the situation as it is. Not only that, grow during these times. So form these five good habits. And I do wish that you will always have this bread with you. So that when you receive the bread of Jesus Christ, the union of communion will be so great because you will be bringing something to the Lord as the Lord brings His graces, His presence to you. Have a good day. Our church has gone through many milestones in her life and there is much to be thankful for as we look back on the many sacrifices that were made to build the church that we have today. As our church strives to continue to rise above the current 
May our hearts burn with love and zeal to grow and enliven the lives of the many people. Let us reignite and shine our faith by supporting our church, as her mission is still very much growing and now, more than ever, needs your support. Hi everyone! I'm Uncle Mark and I'm Auntie Janice and hi parents and children, how have you been doing? We are moving back to home-based learning for the primary school children here in Singapore and in your mind you must be thinking, here we go again. <laughs> yes, I know things may not have been going our way but it is precisely in these times that we should celebrate all the little blessings we have, right? Exactly. So we would like you to join us for our very special virtual Children's Day celebration on 9th October, 4pm. We're going to celebrate you, the children of God. That's right. So register using the QR code for the Zoom link or watch us on Facebook Live at Little Faith Steps. Facebook page. We're going to have lots of fun celebrating our blessings and praying for the upcoming end of year exams too. So come join us at our virtual playground as a family and see, see you, you there! there.